Dr. Mark Tangizi here with your Science Moment. Uh, as you may have seen on Twitter, I've been keeping track of all of the folks in the anti-lockdowner movement who originally weren't. You know, in March and April, when it mattered most, um, they were uh, screaming, lockdown, mask up, uh, this is a super novel, altogether novel, disproportionately dangerous virus, and so on. And they contributed to the very mass hysteria that led to medical authoritarianism and the sort of the COVID totalitarianism, um, which we witnessed for two plus years. Right? Now, they came to the correct side, so to speak. They eventually woke up. But I've been pointing this out for uh, several reasons. One is that um, the, in order to understand what happened, we have to understand that it was regular folks who believe that they love freedom or are for freedom that fell into it. That is, people people who believe that they're good and freedom-loving fall into these kinds of social manias to push their righteous notion of the good. That is, we're all susceptible to these sorts of things. So this is one of the reasons that I think. The other reason is that free expression, the network of free expression relies, depends upon reputation flowing through the network. And what that means is that when you make a big mistake, you say something extremely wrong, well, then you should get a big reputation hit. I mean, more generally, we say things wrong, you get a reputation hit. You get to say things right, you get, maybe your reputation goes up. That's how it works. And when you make, when you fail the biggest litmus test of our generation, in terms of COVID back in March and, and April of 2020, the idea that you would just move forward and not take a reputation hit means there's a broken free expression network, right? The, the, the free expression network would never work that way in a public square, but because it's scaled up, you know, 10,000, 1 million fold from where, where we evolved to sort of handle networks of that size. It's so big that it's very hard to get um, uh, the, the network to ding the reputations of all those who deserve it. And it needs to happen because otherwise the free expression network is sick. All right. So a lot of people still say, look, a lot of these folks, uh, they're, they're now on our side. Why are you pointing it out? You're just hurting the cause. And look, let me, let me t tell you, there's two ways that people say that they're pro-freedom now, and, you know, former, former lockdowners who are pro-freedom now, but in fact, they um, still aren't, in, tr in, in fact. So there's two kinds. There's one who says, well, I was only pro-lockdown because the science seemed to suggest that it was right at the time. Right? That's their viewpoint. And so they've come to change their viewpoint because they believe the science has changed. Either they thought COVID was much more dangerous than, they, than it was or, or, or much more infectious than they later found that it was, or they thought that lockdowns or masks or vaccines worked much more effectively than they later found that they did. Now, that misses the point. If you're going to have a rigorous principled foundation for freedom, for civil liberties, then you can't rest civil liberties on waiting for the science to tell you whether it's okay to have civil liberties. That's not how it works. They're not on my side. Right? If that's your viewpoint of freedom, you are not on my side. That's why I'm going after them. The other, the other kind of freedom warrior who was originally a lockdowner that I'm going after are the kind that says, well, I, I woke up, but, but the reason I had that view is because the secret cabal of mustache twiddlers lied and tricked. They tricked me. They tricked all of us. They did it to us. Right? These are the pandemic folks. Very often it ends with the Jews at the end of these conspiracy theories. No, it, it, if you want to understand why this happened, you have to understand that it's a social mania, mass hysteria. You fell into it. You are culpable, right? You're culpable the more you had a big voice, the longer you voiced your pro-authoritarian positions and the greater responsibility, formal responsibility that you had. You're culpable not some cabal that did this to us. There's no cabal that did this to us. These people are not on my side either. They're not on the side of freedom. They're now into some conspiracy notion about who's trying to do this to us. And again, typically with the Jews at the end. Right? They're not on my side. Why, Mark, are you going after these freedom leaders, you know? Going after folks, which I'm not gonna mention here because there's too many, so many freedom folks that you've gone after, Mark. When they're on our side, they're not on my side. They're not on your side. They don't have a principled justification, a principled defense for freedom at all. Right? They are faux freedom warriors because they have ill or cognitive biases that prevent them from having, in fact, the kinds of principles which will insulate them, which will inoculate them to the very failure they made 
in March and April of 2020. The very reason that I came in to this you know, political world that I did, the reason I entered was because in March of 2020, all of those in my house, my freedom house, all of these supposed classical liberals failed. Everybody, left, right, center, libertarians, all of them were screaming we should do lockdowns, masks are necessary, just two weeks, blah, 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 on and on. So I came and said, look, all of these folks who claim to be freedom-loving, civil libertarians, classical liberals, all of these people are sitting on principles that failed them at the time. So no, I'm not going to sit here and let folks claim to be backing freedom, and yet you can see right away that they're not in fact holding principles that will protect them when the next such mass hysteria sweeps through. They will only begin contributing to it unbeknownst to them. That's why I'm going after these folks for these suites of reasons. And that was your science moment. If you haven't gotten a copy of Dr. Tim Barber in my um, recent book, Expressly Human, it is on the foundations of emotional expressions and the foundations of free expression itself.